Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're gonna to ask this fundamental question, is Linux Mint collecting data? Hmm. Well, this actually, uh, somebody started sending me a couple of these articles and I deeply appreciate them so we can evaluate them, see what's going on. Uh, this was kind of after doing the analysis of the Raspberry Pi with adding the Microsoft repository list and adding, uh, j just looking at a few other things and so, uh, first, they had the Linux Mint blog actually had on its website, this was February 20th, something about updating your computer. And what, what I actually got out of this more than anything was that, yeah, it's actually, uh, the apt package is actually quite important that it exists. So they're talking here about security updates, why it's important, and then what they had here is some basic statistics. Now, first and foremost, let me say that Linux Mint does not deeply actively keep statistics on computers in that they don't keep any statistics from the operating system. There, there's nothing in the operating system itself that's sending data back, but they do actually mention uh, over their, the course of their history, only two places where data seems to be collected. I have read one of these articles and I could not for the life of me find it. I will explain it a little bit later on, but this article here actually tells us one of the challenges with that apt repository on the Raspberry Pi coming from Microsoft. It tells us here statistics are not precisely, um, are not precise, but they do tell us something. They say about 30% of users apply updates in less than a week. So they said after, Fire, after we updated Firefox 85, we asked Yahoo to give us a breakdown. So why Yahoo? Well, we'll get into that in a minute. They asked Yahoo to give us a breakdown of the Linux Mint traffic per user agent. These statistics only covered users which use Yahoo, of course, but they did show us how fast the update was applied. We were also able to observe the fact that only 30% of users updated their web browser in less than a week. These statistics showed us the diff uh, show us different uh, users of recent Linux Mint releases which do not apply updates at all. For instance, a part of the traffic uses Firefox 77, the version which shipped with Linux Mint 20. They said between 5 and 30% of users run Linux Mint 17X, and they make a big deal that saying that 0% of users should be running that because that reached end of life in April of 2019, almost a full two years ago, which is something important. And what they're talking about down here is the 30% figure comes from our apt repositories. It's the traffic percentage we get from Linux Mint 17. It's unreliable because apt got better performing less HTTP requests for the same queries and we lowered the default cache update frequency in modern releases. It's unreliable also because we've started and become better at release after release at recommending the use of local mirrors. So there's naturally a higher proportion of users not using mirrors in older releases. We can reasonably assume the number is higher in reality. Then again, uh, again, it doesn't really matter to us if the real number is 10 or 15%, it needs to be zero because we're talking about Linux Mint 17. So a couple points. Number one, they are able to detect the number of servers that ping in their computers if they are still using the Linux Mint mirrors. If you go through and change your Linux Mint mirrors to something else, well, that other organization could be keeping statistics. It may, it may not be. This is actually why I generally set my repositories to universities because they tend to have less interest, ability, care or concern to keep any statistics. So when I'm updating my mirrors, I always go to university mirrors. Usually I go with Virginia Tech because it's the nearest big university to me that has a Linux Mint repository. There's a few other ones as well. I think MIT has one as well. Sadly, Penn State University does not, being as if that's only five miles from me, then uh, I, hey, that would be cool, you know? <laughs> but unfortunately, Penn State's a jerk and they don't have the Linux Mint repositories. Bummer. But anyway, so the take home message here is that yes, the concerns are justified. If there is an app request to packages.microsoft.com, then Microsoft can collect data. And since Microsoft is a data whoremonger, they will collect such data. And so that's why I had that concern. But what they're seeing here is they're basically saying, hey, we just happen to know based on the pings and going in that if a person has installed Linux Mint and if they have not changed their mirrors, that we can detect approximately how many used it. Now, what data do they have? Do they have IP addresses? Maybe, maybe not. Do they have 
Uh, usage computer data, probably not. Do they have, I, uh, what else is there? Eh, I don't know. There, there's not a lot that can be, can be captured. I guarantee you Microsoft's capturing IP addresses because that's what they do. However, what we find in this article also that's telling, they said down here they asked Yahoo, what is going on here? Well, when you install Linux Mint, it has this customized homepage. There's even a blog post about it uh, saying, hey, why are we forced to be on this really crappy, uh, this really crappy uh, Yahoo startup page? Well, because part of the business, they, you know, they have a sponsorship with Yahoo to list Yahoo and a custom Linux Mint page on the homepage. This is the article I could not find. It exists. It's out there. Somebody, if one of you guys knows where it is, please list it in the comments. But it talks about how they're able to grab some basic statistical usage based on the number of people that are running Linux Mint opening Firefox and not changing the homepage because that homepage does indeed check home to Linux Mint. Now, is this a serious problem? I don't really contend it is. It's not something in Firefox itself. It's just the website landing page, which is consistent with nearly every other operating system out there, except maybe the majority of Linux systems. Now, is it a big deal? No. As soon as you change the Firefox page and don't land on the startup page for your original Firefox build, no big deal. You can even install Linux Mint, uninstall Firefox before you do anything else, install something like Chromium or Brave or anything else that you find, never use it, and Linux Mint is no idea what you're doing. Assuming, of course, you're also using different mirrors on your uh, on your repositories. So that's the article I couldn't find. It does exist where they have some basic statistical data based upon users who have installed Linux Mint and are using the default Firefox and the default Firefox page, and you're using the Linux Mint repositories that ships with Linux Mint. So is this necessarily a problem? Not particularly. There's no piece of software that does it, and Linux Mint has been very open that they don't really care about data. Now, the next article that was sent to me on a related note came from the update which just dropped yesterday. And so in this one here, we're not going to go through the whole article because there's a lot of it that's just to talk about bug fixes, future directions. This is the standard Linux Mint article here. But one of the things that they say here is that they are uh, they're applying some different things inside of the update manager. So it says down here, we started working on improvements for the update manager and the next release, the manager won't just look for available updates. It will also keep track of particular metrics and be able to detect cases where updates are overlooked. Some of these metrics are when was the last time updates were applied? When was the last time packages were upgraded on the system? For how many days has a particular update been shown? They say in some cases, the update manager will be able to remind you to apply updates. In a few of them, it must even it might even insist. We don't want to be dumb and get in your way, though. It's here to help. If you are handling things your way, it will detect smart patterns of usages, and it will also be configurable to let you change the way it is set up. We have a key principle at Linux Mint. One of them is that this is your computer, not ours. We also have many use cases in mind and don't want to make Linux Mint harder to use for any of them. So we're going to stop reading at that point there. Now, first and foremost, after reading this and then reading some of the comments, this is a little bit poorly worded. According to Clem, the lead developer of Linux Mint, as expressed in the comments down below this article, because a lot of people were concerned about this. Linux Mint Updater sends absolutely no data back to Linux Mint. This is a pure local only thing. It is a highly configurable thing. So you can say like, hey, leave me the hell alone. That's fine. And frankly, I would prefer they didn't even do any of this nonsense. All right. I generally on my production computer, I don't typically run software updates. Oh my God, am I insecure? No. I don't use the computer for anything but production. I don't want things to change. I don't want an update to bork it up. When I have time, I have availability in my schedule and I know exactly when I'm going to be doing it. I will apply security updates that I know need to be applied. I will test things rigorously to make sure everything works. I mean, the last time I accidentally updated the computer, I was trying to just 
update one single package and I messed up the command and updated the whole system. Like, oh, oh well, may as well run an update. And then it killed Audacity. Audacity changed everything. And I'm in the middle of doing an audiobook, And now I have an audiobook that was started with the old version and I now have to finish it with a new version. And that could cause some discrepancy in how the fo volume sounds. That's a pain. And I don't want to have to deal with that kind of stuff. That's actually why I run Linux Mint on production and I run Arch on my non-production system, my media PC that's on that I do basic random stuff because that one's always updated. And then I can play with Audacity before it rolls over. I can play with Caden Live before it rolls over. I can test all of the software, learn how to use the differences before they're updated over here. So I'm going to be the person that when this new update manager comes down, I'm just going to be like, yeah, turn off, shut off, leave me alone because that's exactly Exactly what I want. They say here that they're going to be, uh, they're basically allows you to be highly configurable so you can set it up. Again, I think this article is poorly worded. And that comes out in the fact that down here in the comments, there were a lot of people that were concerned about this because Linux Mint has always taken a strong stance to not be interested in user data. And in reality, they're not really interested in user data. So they say, uh, this guy down here, metrics at uh, no metrics at no metrics I have a sneaky suspicion that's a fake email address. I just, I, I'm just slightly sure. But it says, um, is this disabled? I hope disabled by default. If not, do I have the choice? Uh, I will have no choice but to remove Mint update completely. If this continues, I shall remove Mint completely. And he says, your comment is very dramatic. It's dramatic. Just like switch to Linux. I'm dramatic. And I admit it. He says, metrics are data the software can measure, not data the software sends or shares behind your back. It's open source. Let me be blunt as well. We supply your OS if you don't trust us. Either don't lose our software. And that's true. At some point in time, we have to stay, all right, I'm going to have to trust somebody at some point in time. Uh, you don't want to go through life without any trust. And then a couple other people, this guy wants to make window edges rounded, but uh, Boris the pig, <laughs> he came in here and uh, Kate added some extra stuff. I fail to see on some cases, few of them might even insist, isn't this, uh, is this in any way in accord to, we have key principles at Linux Mint, one of them is that this is your computer, not ours. If I lock down my machine, my machine, it is not your place to insist. Uh, is that in some way unacceptable? In addition, Update Manager will keep track of particular metrics. You need to be very clear under no circumstance the data will be sent anywhere. Some people are suspicious about uh, about simple keep system uh, alive mechanisms. All right, so keep alive mechanisms, pingbacks, things like that. So all of these to be clear on what you will or will not do with the data. Will it just open the floodgates to conspiracy theories and paranoics? And that's me. Where's my hat? It's my tinfoil hats back there. Ah, give me my tinfoil hat. So uh, he says, Boris, uh, we've been very clear on this. Let me say it here. Under no circumstance will the data ever be sent anywhere. By the way, the data is only relevant to Mint Update. It's Mint Updates keeping track. So here's another tip, by the way. If you're concerned about this, you can actually disable Mint Update. Uh, it's actually very simple. Just go into your startup software in your menu and turn off Mint Update. Okay. <laughs> and then just make sure that you're having the regular time and just go into your terminal, sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade. There you have it. You can do all this without Mint Upgrade. So anyway, it's Mint Upgrade. Uh, keep tracking of what itself has showed you and for how long right now. All it knows is what's available. It doesn't know how long it's been available. So that's just how it is right now before this change is implemented. It doesn't know if you've ever had a chance to look at it or not. It knows there are updates, but it doesn't know if you've been ignoring them or not. It cannot interrupt your workflow and catch your attention. That's the biggest thing for me. I do not want it. Like uh, sometimes I'll watch some of the streams and you'll hear the Windows updates in the background. Boom. It's like... That, great, a Windows notification just occurred on my production software reminding me to install updates. <laughs> no. um, and that's kind of what I don't want to see. So hopefully we don't have any of that nonsense because here's a thought. I'm sitting here working. I don't want to be interrupted. That's why I generally turn notifications off most of the time on my systems. It knows there are updates, doesn't know if you've been ignoring them. It cannot interrupt your workflow and catch your attention without first making sure you're not aware of them and without making sure it's been like that. The data is data. Minute, uh, Mint update writes for itself. It's of no value to anything else. 
and the mint, uh, minute it is no longer useful, the minute it gets deleted. You, uh, you can think of it as a cache. Here's an example. One key event clearly tells mint update you're on top of things. If you press the apply button, it knows you've taken care of things, whether you've applied everything or not. As of today, it's the job is done. It no longer needs to care about the long updates were how long updates were available. So basically, he's just talking about the what this is doing. Now, I don't want it, like I said, to pop up. I don't want it to remind me that you haven't installed Firefox for a while. Yes, because Firefox has become woke Fox, and I'm really not interested in updating it a whole lot. My system is very well secure behind a very robust firewall. I have hardened Firefox down. I do not want the woke upgrades to Firefox. Thank you. The biggest thing that gets in my way is that ginormous search bar. It pisses me off. It triggers me. I'm offended by it. Cancel the bar. Cancel the bar. So I've held back Firefox intentionally on nearly all of my computers so that my URL bar doesn't get big when I focus on it. I know that's a petty little thing, but that's my computer and that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> and I'm not using Wokefox as much as I used to anyway. So there we have it. So there we are. And um, is Linux Mint actually collecting any user data? The answer is no, they are not. Some people might point over to this page over here, community.linuxmint.com. This guy over here is just an analysis of people who have signed in, logged in, and intentionally left data to uh, analyze and interpret. No big deal. So this doesn't have any real, anything at all. There's no data there. This guy over here is a former post, how many people um, are on it. And basically the best indication you can get is how many times it was downloaded. But I mean, I could download it for no other reason than to just reseed it inside of the torrents and help take some server load off of Linux Mint. That's an option you can have. So they can see that there's, uh, what is it, 154,196 downloads of Linux Mint 19.1, you know, all, all the way down and you can see see what those numbers are. Now, again, this is an old post going back to June 2019. So that's just some basic data on torrents. Overall, the message is pretty clear. Linux Mint is not actually interested in how many people are using the system uh, in that respect. If they were, they would actually put more types of data collection. They might opt in them. They might tell you about it on the installer, but they don't. So just for note, reference, and summary, the if you're still using the default source mirrors, then they can detect the ping. That was the concern I had with the Microsoft packages repository quietly being added to the Raspberry Pi. You can simply get around that one by changing your mirrors. And if you change your mirrors prior to the first update, then, hey, there you have it. You can go ahead and change those mirrors and then update your cache. Linux Mint will be invisible to that. The second place Linux Mint will collect data is from Yahoo on the original Linux Mint startup page on the default Firefox, which you can get around a number of ways. One of those is completely removing Firefox. You could install Firefox ESR, which does not have that stupid, annoying, triggering giant URL bar. Or you can go ahead and you can use uh, some other web browser, or you can boot it up the very first time with, uh, you know, without being connected to the internet. You can change the, the default landing page, something else, close down Firefox, restart, you know, restart your internet, and they're also invisible to you. So that is really the update. Is Linux Mint collecting data? No. They do have a new updated Mint update manager coming. It does not collect any data to send out. It just has some data internal to itself to let you know about upgrades you might have been neglecting. I'm not sure why they did this because it's frankly very easy to tell. And if I have been neglecting an update, it means that I had to manually uncheck a box prior to updating updates. I think that this is a meaningless little thing, but Hey, that's what it is. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So there's my thoughts. If you have seen or know where that other article is, please link it in the comments down below. I would deeply appreciate that. And uh, with that, let me know your other thoughts on all this down below as well. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. 
please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.